Hi everybody and welcome to the third tutorial in our Python for Beginners series. In today's tuutorial we're going to be talking about lists, tuples and sets. Now over here I've written down sort of a, a bit of an overview um, so you can better understand where lists, tuples and sets really fit in. So first off, yes they are a data type. Um, and if you remember, we, re we already looked at some data types in the first and the second tutorial. In the first tutorial, we talked about how we can manipulate um, textual data by looking at strings. In the second tutorial, we looked at the numeric data types, um, which were integers and floats. And today, we're looking at the sequence types. And, um, in Python, the sequence types are lists, tuples, and sets. So we're going to go ahead and start off with a really easy example of a list. Um, let's say we want to make a list of our friends, right? So we're going to have friends written over here. We're going to be using the square brackets. It's important that you use the square brackets. I'm going to go into that uh, later on in the video. Uh, because depending on what type of brackets you're using, it will determine whether you are using a list, a tuple, or a set. Yeah, so depending on um, which one of these you're using. But we'll get into that. So make sure you're using the square brackets. And now go ahead and let's make our first, <laughs> our first list. Um, our first friend is going to be Max. Second one is going to be John, then we're going to have Mary, and we're going to have Jill in our friends list. So, first thing you can do is you can check the length of your list in Python. And we already met this command um, in the first tutorial, I think it was. Yeah, the first tutorial, where we tried to determine how long a string was. That was the len function. And you can also apply it to a list. Um, so if we go ahead and type in our friends list um, and pass it into the len function <laughs> and go ahead and run this, you're going to see down here um, a number four pop up. And that corresponds exactly with the number of elements that we have in our friends list. So now let's say you want to access um, uh, some particular element in a list. So let's go ahead and write the print function again, and we're going to want to access the first friend. So how do we access the first friend? We can do this um, by writing in friends and then using the square bracket to um, and accessing the first element by using the index 0. Remember, the first element in a list is always indexed with 0. If you go ahead and run that, you'll get the result uh, which you would expect. It's the first element in the list, and that's the one that plops up. And of course, you can do that with the second element, and the third, and so on, right? So you'll see, depending on whatever index I have here in my uh, friends list, uh, that's the one which is going to be printed. <coughs> now, let's say that you want to print out a sequence from this uh, list you have here. Let's say you want to print out the first two elements. Now, the way you can do that is um, similar to what we learned in one of the prior tutorials when we were looking at strings. Um, so you can use um, the colon uh, to access a, um, a several elements uh, within this list. So if we go ahead and type friends and then zero colon two, it's going to give us the first two elements in this list. Now, you notice that I played around and um, uh, accidentally wrote this the first time I tried it. Um, you'll see that 
the first element given by the index 0 is included, but the next element with the, uh, with the um, index 1, which would be John in this case, is not included. Yeah. So over here, if we want to include John as well, we have to give it, we have to pass in uh, the second index, which um, would be Mary, right? But she is not included, right? So this sort of notation, it always gives you 0 and 1, but not 2. Um, now, if you want to access the last element of a uh, list, you can go ahead and use a negative number, right? This is not particularly intuitive at first sight, but if we go ahead and run that, you'll see I have um, my friends list, I typed in minus one, and it gives me the last element. Now, this is particularly useful if you have um, lists that you don't know the length of, right? So imagine you have a really long list, and um, so the list we have over here is quite small, but say this was really long, you'd have to find the index of the last element and uh, pass it on in here to have the last element. So um, in order to avoid that, we can simply um, use negative numbers to access um, elements at the from starting from the, from the back of the list effectively. So uh, if we go ahead and write num minus two, it's going to go ahead and give us Mary, right? Number three, it's going to go to going to give us John. So right now it's counting from the back of, of, of the list. Right, so now that we know how to access um, elements in a particular list, we're going to go ahead and talk about how we can manipulate uh, lists in Python. So when we think about manipulating lists, one of the things we might think about is how we can add or remove elements from a list. So let's go ahead and start by adding a element by using the append method, right? And it takes one argument, for example, Donny, and after we've added Donny, we want to print the friends list again. So what's going to happen here is that we have our initial list of friends, which does not include Donnie, and we have, by using the method append and passing in the value Donnie, added Donnie to the list of friends. Now how about uh, we decide that we don't only want to add Donnie, um, or we leave out Donnie for the moment, and we want to add our relatives. <coughs> for example, our relatives, um, let's say our uncle Greg, <coughs> and our aunt Anne, to the list of friends. Now, if we use append, Let's go ahead and see what happens. So we're passing in the relatives into the append um, method, and we'll see that the outcome is not what one might expect. So over here we have uh, the initial list of friends, uh, Max, John, Mary, and Jill. And over here, you'll notice that around Greg and Ann, there are square brackets. Now, the reason why there are square brackets around Greg and Ann is because we have added a list data type to a list. Now, let me go ahead and show you really quickly why this is an issue. Um, if we want to, for example, um, output the first element of our friends list, right? Remember how we used uh, these indices and the first one, it's not one but zero. You'll see that it outputs max. Now, that's not a surprise because indeed, um, 
from the friends list, the first element with the index zero is indeed max. The second element um, with the index one will be John, index two will be Mary, index three will be Jill, and index four will be something interesting. It won't be one element, it's going to be a list of elements which we've appended, right? Now, that is a bit annoying because we want to add these elements in a way that allows us to access them individually. Now, in order to do that, we don't use the method append. We're going to use the method extend. You'll see that if I run this again um, on our friends list after we've appended the relatives, the square brackets around Greg and Anne that were there before are now gone. So if we now um, try and print um, the friend at index four, we're not gonna get a list anymore um, like we did before where we got Anne and Greg as an output, but we get Greg only. So we see that it is uh, in fact quite easy to add um, elements to a list and before we get into removing elements from a list, I want to show you one other way that we can go ahead and insert elements into our list of friends, which is by using the method insert. Now, the helpful thing about insert is that it allows us to input a element into a list at a specific index. Let's say we want to make uh, Donnie, our friend from before, the first element in our friends list. So if we go and print out um, the friends list again after we've made this change, you'll see that Donnie has been added to the list at index zero, right? So you can also make this another index, for example, one and it will, it will be added between Max and John at the index one. Now you'll notice that when we use insert as a method, it does not delete the element which is at the index we specify, right? It sim simply moves the other elements um, away from that index. Yeah, so that's something to keep in mind. So how about we try to remove a couple of friends from our friends list? Right, so what we can do to remove a friend is quite intuitively using the method remove and then we can, for example, take John, let's say he's not our friend anymore because he's annoying, and there we go. We've removed John from our friends list by using the remove function quite easily. And um, there is, in fact, another way to remove elements by using the pop method. Now, the pop method is quite special in that it allows us to delete the last element of the list directly. So let's say we use the pop method once, and you'll see the last element, Jill, is in fact gone after we run this program. Now using pop twice, you'll see that two elements are gone, right? Three times, I think you get it, right? Three elements are gone, and so on. So next to the remove function, the pop function is also um, a vi viable method to uh, delete elements from a list. So up until this point, we've talked in quite a lot of detail about lists. Now, the reason why we've done that is because lists appear very often in Python, and you're going to need a firm grasp of how to work with lists if uh, you want to program well in Python. Um, however, at the beginning of the tutorial, I mentioned that the sequence data types also includes tuples and sets. Now, especially when you're a beginner, tuples and sets come up far less, uh, far less uh, often than lists. So I'm only going to go into them very briefly. 
let's talk about tuples first and make our first first tuple tuple um, tuple and when you're making a tuple make sure that you're using the rounded brackets so now let's give it two values such as 10 and 20 and the special thing about tuples is that the values in the tuple cannot be altered. So let's, for example, try to remove um, a value, for example, 10, just like we did before um, when we were using the uh, list. And you'll see that regardless how I do this, I can also add quotation marks around this. Regardless how I try and do this, I cannot alter this. And um, so that's the first property to remember about tuples, that they cannot be altered. Now the second property is that these uh, tuples are ordered. So I can, if I want to, access individual elements out of a tuple by using an index, like I did with lists. So let's try and access the 10. You'll see that um, I've gone ahead and used index zero and accessed the 10. Similarly with the uh, 20, if I go ahead and access index one, I get the 20, the second element, right? So things to remember with tuples are that first, you cannot change a tuple, the elements in a tuple. And the second thing is they are ordered. Now let's look at our first set and change this to a set. And when we use sets, we always make sure to use the rounded uh, curly, I mean curly brackets. Yeah. And now let's give it three elements, such as Max, Jill, and Bob. And uh, the first thing to note about sets is that they are unordered. That means that if I try to access a specific element in a set, um, for example, the first element max by referencing it with the index zero, I'm gonna get an error. Now you can also see that the lists are unordered by running um, this small program a couple of times. You'll see that the first output gives me Bob, Max, and Jill, and the next one gives me Bob, Jill, and Max. Now let's try this one more time and we get Jill, Bob, and Max. So you see the order, it always um, changes. And that's because sets are unordered. However, one thing that we can do with sets is we can change the elements in a set. If, for example, we want to remove an element, let's say Max, from the set, let's go ahead and do that. And just like with lists, we can remove the um, element, right? Yeah, so this is gonna sum up our tutorial for today on lists, sets, and tuples. Uh, if you found it helpful, then make sure to leave a like, it helps out a lot. And let me know down in the comments below on what other improvements I can make to this series, or if there's any sort of programming language um, you'd like me to go into next, then also let me know that down in the comments below. Yeah, and see you in the next one.